I'm on the top floor, so I see and hear everything. I have a bird's eye view over the encampment, and I also see and hear everything that happens in the street. What used to be her spot to catch some fresh air has become anything but for B. Bletsian in the building she's called home for 13 years. Just south of downtown Minneapolis, behind this old brick building on East 24th Street on a city-owned lot, it's easy to see why. How soon do people who live here make contact with the city to say, hey, this has got to... Oh, this immediately. And what's been the reaction from the city at this point? A joke. Bletzian and some of her neighbors sat down with Alpha News to detail the nightmare they've been living these last four weeks. It blows my mind that anyone would think it's okay to put this here, this harm reduction encampment where people are being enabled to use and to overdose. We've had, I think, like five overdoses already so far. You know, and the, the level of crime that is happening here, people being threatened at gunpoint multiple times, shootings happening here, so much is going on. It just blows my mind in such a short amount of time. It's like this place has just descended into a living hell. Human feces on their doorstep, in their yards, and on what used to be a community garden. They're using it like their personal outhouse. There's toilet paper and piles and piles and piles of human feces, literally where my squash was growing. Break-ins have been reported in their buildings where people have left their belongings behind. Even their garbage cans have been stolen. Still, that barely scratches the surface. The shooting happened on my front lawn. Um, from my understanding, two people were shot. One individual lost his life. And one of my residents uh, witnessed it from beginning to end. Joshua Fuss has been struggling to run his sober house ever since the encampment moved in. Neighbors say it was a fight over drug territory that ended in murder. Initially had stated that he was all right, that he was okay. And the next day ended up relapsing, going out and getting drunk from having to watch somebody be murdered. Last night, I think there was another shooting and I get a call from the guy who's managing the house and he's calling me and they're laying on the floor and he's like, there's another shooting and they're in the living room laid on the ground because they're worried that they're going to get hit by a stray bullet. I did have one guy that went over there and they offered to sell him drugs and he caved. And if it doesn't get taken care of soon, it's only a matter of time before a other people make the same decision that he did or I lose my business. Nobody wants to come to a sober home and get clean next to an encampment where people are getting high and selling drugs. Mm. Or people are getting shot on the front lawn. The encampment is just a mile from one that burned down at the beginning of March, as the city seems to continue its whack-a-mole approach to the ongoing crisis. John Stiles rents out his triplex just blocks from the encampment. It's really important to me that I'm providing a safe and nice place for my residents to live. So I've got three separate families that live there. I'm the one that answers when they call. So I got a call that, hey, my garage is broken into and you know all my really important stuff has been stolen. I have just took a deep breath because we've gone through this before with a different encampment years ago when we did live here. So I, I know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I've instructed them to call 911, call 311, but it feels like there's no meaningful response. Another resident, he has had his car stolen, which is what he uses for work. He drives for, for a living. To my knowledge, it still hasn't shown up anywhere. And there's several kids that live at this property. They don't feel safe to go outside. Normally, if there's yeah. a complaint about my property, mm -hmm. okay, well, let me fix it, but I can't fix this. The frustration palpable as they've witnessed organizations supply food and firewood. While meetings with city council members have gone nowhere, and they say pleas to the mayor have been met with silence. In a short statement to Alpha News, a city spokesperson said the site is planned for closure this week. Mayor Fry is a joke. Um, I, I can't, like, he is just so spineless. We need to have a leader in this city who can stand up to stuff like this and say, you know what, enough is enough. This has gone way too far. We're not gonna tolerate this anymore and do something. Where there's a will, there's a way. He can figure out a way to deal with this without having to endanger 
people who actually live here, who pay rent and who pay mortgages and pay city taxes and live here. Just glossing over it by saying, oh, well, these are vulnerable people and there's Native Americans who live here and these are BIPOC people, you know. All of those things may be true. That's not an excuse to just enable awful, horrendous behavior that is a health hazard and a criminal hazard to everybody else around here. I get that people need to have their needs addressed. We're people too. I just feel like my anxiety is 24 seven and it's really frightening. And I, I just feel completely powerless to do anything about it no matter how many pleas we make to the people in our government that are supposed to keep us safe. Nothing happens.